quiet. So I'm going to go ahead and call to order the uh, November meeting of the Johnson County Library Board of Directors. Welcome, everyone. We have a good many guests today. So welcome. Um, we are going to start with citizens' comments. We have uh, one person who has signed up. Uh, just so everyone kind of understands the etiquette is um, if you are speaking, you will come to the podium and if you would please tell us your name and the city in Johnson County that you live in and you will have two minutes to address the board. It is up to individual board members if they wish to comment back or just receive what you would like to tell us. Um, Mr. Padilla. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Um, I would like to talk to you about the library mission. Uh, you have a statement. It's uh, very extensive. And a couple of times, uh, respect is mentioned in that mission statement. After I, I spoke at the beginning of the October meeting, uh, Johnson County Library Council mentioned speakers should have parameters. You know, to me, that was disrespectful. I take that meaning me. I want to mention Kansas City, Missouri Public Library. They do not have a council. Lawrence, Kansas Library. They do not have a council. So I'm, I'm uh, hopeful and I'm... Uh, I'm hopeful and I'm suggesting that Johnson County Library eliminate the Johnson County Council. Possibility Council could work the system, give back recommend, big give bad recommendations to the president of the board. Items could not be bought to the attention of the board. Possibly library personnel could be intimidated. The library personnel, I've, I've been a member, I've been a resident of Johnson County since 1967. Johnson County Library has always had top rate library personnel. But I would hope that no one would be interfering with their work or they had to have approval before they could have an exhibit up in the library that possibly the council did not agree with. So th that, that is my concern today. And I, I really hope that people can feel free to make their comments without parameters. I, you know, I think that people who speak are civil and bring things concerns to the attention of, of the Johnson County Library. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to discuss that with us. Are there any other, anything in writing has been posted to us, so we are ready to move on. Uh, are any members of the Johnson County Library Board have any public remarks they would like to make? Um, yes, Bethany. I just wanted to share the great experience I had in our microspace recently. I had shadowed Amber Borick Slater uh, for a presentation, which she did to a group uh, of ladies at the Olive Garden. And she didn't have any um, technology available, so she just did the whole presentation verbatim without any uh, notes or slides or anything. They were very impressed. I was very impressed. What I learned out of it, though, I knew our makerspace had some wonderful equipment like the 3D printer, uh, sewing machines and so on, but I learned about the laser engraver. Um, so I quickly went home, made an appointment, bought some glasses at Dollar Tree and uh, engraved them for a little gift for someone. It took me all of one hour and about $5 to get it done. So I highly encourage you all, if you haven't already, to check out what is available in the makerspace and fully utilize all those um, great services we have available. Thank you. 
Excellent. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Hi. So I um, attended the Writers Conference last week, Thursday, or I mean Friday and Saturday, and I thought it was a really wonderful experience experience, very well put together. The food was fabulous. The speakers were incredible. I made some new friends. I joined a little writer's group. We're going to meet tomorrow night. So yeah, it was very, very well done. Thank you. Excellent. Anyone else? Okay. My remarks are small, so it's just really nice to hear feedback from board members who are surprised about what the library has in store for them. And Thank you to communications for doing what you can so that they learn about things and so that everybody in the general public can also learn about all of the wonderful things that we provide here system-wide. Um, yesterday I spent a little bit of time at a kickoff meeting for the uh, Prairie Village um, Future Project and it's just kind of step one in investigating what is possible and that was an interesting experience to have several different groups brainstorming. I didn't know that so many sticky notes could ever be utilized in a conversation but um, it was really really neat to kind of hear the first part of a dream for a campus for the people of Prairie Village and the ways that the library system may be able to partner with them to give Prairie Village a 21st century library that will be home to all kinds of new memories and new things. And so um, I kind of felt a little bit yesterday like planting seeds for a tree I will whose shade I will never sit under, uh, being that my, time, my term will expire in um, May of 24, but it was still really good to be a part of the start of that conversation and what the future board will be able to do with that to partnership with, to partner with a city hopefully to do something really, really cool. And so that is all from me, Commissioner Hanslick. We've switched up order a little bit oh, today, so okay. you're next. Well, thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to take a, a kind of a point of personal privilege uh, today to talk about uh, someone that probably most of you don't know, but I think that there are a number of library staff here that, that do know him. Um, and uh, in my role as county commissioner, I have the privilege of meeting some very, very special people in our community. And, and they aren't always the people that you might think, the people that uh, are on boards or are elected or heads of companies. Sometimes it's, uh, it's just your regular people who make the most impression. And so I wanted t today to um, mention uh, someone, uh, Mr. Jeff Sturkey. He unfortunately passed away just recently. Um, and Mr. Sturkey uh, was a, an almost daily visitor here to the Central Resource Library. He, he uh, he would sometimes come to these meetings, sometimes even spoke at times. Um, but Mr. Sturkey was a special person. He, um, he lived alone, not far from here. He did not drive. So the first time I talked to him, he had, it was right after I uh, was first elected, he called me and wanted to talk about the bus system, but he also wanted to talk about how much he loves the libraries. And we talked frequently. Sometimes he'd call me a couple times a day. <laughs> uh, and especially during the pandemic because uh, Mr. Sturkey depended on this library for uh, books, for social connections, and for the computers. He did not have a computer or internet at his house. So it was really hard for him during the pandemic uh, first of all, the, the bus system was uh, greatly reduced, and the libraries were not open. Uh, and when they were, when they did open, it was greatly reduced. So it was really hard on him. And um, he called me a lot, <laughs> I think, to to find out what was happening. Um, but his calls were always such a bright spot in a rather dreary and challenging time. Um, 
So, and I was also going to mention that, that Mr. Sturkey was also the inspiration for my proposing in next year's county budget, uh, senior property tax relief program. Uh, he's the kind of person I thought about when thinking about the needs of the county. And uh, I'm really gonna miss his phone calls. Um, I'm going to miss visiting with him. The last time I saw him in person, I, uh, he was in a rehab facility, and I went and visited him. And um, I'm, he has touched my life. I will never forget him, and uh, glad to honor him. I'm, I'll be making a gift to the library in his honor. So thank you for that point of personal privilege today. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, like all of the feels all of a sudden. So. <laughs> um, so it's really wonderful to hear about the more personal face of what we do, that it isn't just policy, it isn't just governance, that these are real people and real lives and we have a very real opportunity to pour into each other and actually really provide community and that's, not just our mission and the vision, but just it makes our community so much better. And so it is a privilege to be a, a part of that with all of you and that we get to do that. So thank you for sharing that. And another thing that we get to do that's kind of cool is one of my favorite parts of the year. So uh, Chanda, if you would like to come up and tell us what's going on. What is going on? Uh, good afternoon. I'm Shanta Dickerson, Executive Director of the Friends of Johnson County Library, and I'm so excited. You have no idea how excited I am right now <laughs> to present the winners of the 2023 Friends of Johnson County Library Bookmark Design Contest. Um, this is a beloved community program that we hold every year in conjunction with National Friends of Libraries Week. And I'm uh, just so, so excited to, to welcome these artists into our community of uh, they will now be part of the legacy of this bookmark design contest. And uh, we just, we so appreciate and enjoy the celebration of creativity and literacy that's made possible through the support of our, our friends, members, and donors. So, which are 850 strong at this point. So we we're so grateful for them for their support. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, I would ask that you'll hold your applause until the end. And when we're done, winners, if you will, Follow, well, first I'm gonna have you come back here and stand up behind me, and we're gonna do a, a board photo. I think we're, there's, there was talk of, of sliding that in today. Uh, we'll, no? we'll do a photo. Yes. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, so yeah, come up here, hang out. We're gonna give everybody applause at the end, and we'll get some photos, and then I'm gonna have you follow me out next door, and we're gonna hook you up with your gift cards to the Friends bookstores and, and all the fun stuff, all the cool stuff. Um, <laughs> hey, <laughs> we have an adult Sorry. category, Bethany. I just <laughs> oh. um, all right. So let's let's dive in. Uh, this year we have fourteen winners in seven categories. So here we go. In the preschool to kindergarten category, our winners are Lucy Dunbar. Marcus Sandoval. In the grades one to two category, our winners are Rose O'Hara. And Mackenzie Crofton, Crofton, excuse me. In the grades three to four category, our winners are Ben Thompson, and Logan Scarborough. In the grades five to six category, our winners are Autumn Lamar,
in Louisa Good. In the grades seven to eight category, our winners are Kennedy Kirkland, and Roz O'Mara. In the grades nine to 12 category, our winners are Chloe Morali. I figured your last name right, Chloe. I got off the hook, all right. And Brooklyn Morrissey. And last but not least, our adult category winners, uh, Liz Vargas. Um, and I will just end with uh, Matt Hutkins. He was unfortunately not able to break away from work today, so I knew he wasn't gonna make it. So here we are, congratulations. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for that. That is always fun to see how lacking my artistic abilities actually are. So thank you to everybody who shared that. We are gonna go ahead and move on to the board council report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we've been asked to comment on several different items today. Uh, first on Memoranda of Understanding, MOUs. Um, we uh, use memor memorandum of understanding as uh, it's just another form of contract or an agreement. Uh, we have typically used those when we enter into agreements with other county agencies. And uh, this evening, uh, you have two examples of that that you will consider and vote on later. A memorandum of understanding between the library and the Johnson County Department of Health and Environment and then consideration of, a, of an MOU between the library and the Johnson County Election Office. And we have quite a number of these and uh, we've used it as a way, it's, it's still, a, these are still contracts uh, with very supportable provisions, very clear, but we've used these kind of as a, maybe a simpler form of agreement uh, when we enter into these agreements with other, with other agencies. So I think that gives you some background on that. Um, the can um, we were also asked to comment on something that arose in the Great Depression, uh, the Kansas Cash Basis Law and how that applies uh, to the library and to public entities in general. Um, as you know, in the crash in the early 30s, there were some governments that literally did not have funds. And the Kansas legislature passed a law that said that uh, any entity could only adopt a budget for those funds that it had on hand or that it knew that it could receive that year uh, through, uh, through tax. And uh, because they actually, we actually had entities that, that really just didn't have any funds. Um, so it has remained in effect. The way that, that it has been interpreted in Kansas and the way that we've historically at the library interpreted it is, um, that uh, that's one of the reasons that the library has a long tradition of going with one-year contracts. There are, some, there are some exceptions to that, uh, but uh, that's why uh, you will have contracts that you will re renew on an annual basis. 
Um, it just, it's just a long-standing practice to do that. So that's, I think, why I was asked to explain that and uh, never an issue about the library having funds on hand, but the law is still applicable and there's a long tradition of one-year agreements, which is why we do that and the way we do it. So I think that gives you an overview on that. I'll ask if there are any questions on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And Madam, Madam Chair. Yes. If I might, I, I should have mentioned this during my comments, but I do want to recognize uh, Joe Waters, who is uh, our assistant county manager, and this will be his last library meeting. He is the staff uh, assigned to uh, this board, but he is retiring next month. And so he has been, uh, gosh, how many library board meetings have you sat through? <laughs> Hundreds. So much You've never <laughs> counted it. But I do want to recognize uh, Joe uh, and his devotion to the library. He, gosh, he oversaw the, tr helped oversee that transition when the to the facilities and he has done so much uh, to support the Johnson County Library so I would ask you to join me in recognizing <laughs> him. we wish you all the best and thank you thank you for that uh, of course opportunity okay Trisha it is your ball game I'll invite Dave Rotney to the podium for the finance report. I think I can just talk here. Can you, everybody hear me? Okay, okay. good. Um, so uh, we're going to take a look at your at the Johnson County Library total revenue report. Uh, we're going to be reporting on how we ended September of 2023. It's in page 16 in your uh, board packet. Um, as of the end of September. Uh, the library board has collected approximately 44.4 million in revenue, which represents about 92% of uh, what's anticipated to be collected for the year. Uh, we, as you can see, we're still negative in the ad valorem delinquent. Uh, that's due to some, some payouts that we have um, uh, for some back tax issues. And then um, otherwise, the other the, the thing that we're obviously lagging on would be the 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 fees that are generated, and that would be expected as we uh, had waived uh, our late fees uh, earlier this year. So from a budgetary perspective, uh, 2024, uh, that's already been taken out. And um, uh, based on that, I've, uh, we're at about where I would expect us to be at this point in the year. Um, and then you can see from an expenditure standpoint, uh, we've spent and or have obligated uh, encumbrances totaling approximately 34.6 million, which is about 72%. So if we're about 75% of the way through the year, uh, we're, we're tracking about 3% lower than uh, where we'd anticipate to be at this point in time. So with that, I'll stand for any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you. I'll invite Adam Wathen to the podium for the statistics. Good evening. I'm Adam Wathen, Associate Director for Branch Services at the library, and I'm doing the monthly statistical report for November, which includes data back to September um, for the year. And after my report, I'll be joined by Shelley O'Brien, our Director of Development, and um, she will give a report on development. You'll see that our physical circulation trend continues to pace at about the same place, um, a little bit below prior years and then and not caught up uh, to 2019 levels. But our digital usage trend is also pacing again much higher and is uh, uh, continues to go up. And our visitation trend is similar. It paces above previous years but has not caught up to pre-COVID levels in 2019. Any questions about that before Shelley joins? Thanks, Adam. Shelley? Uh, Shelley O'Brien, Director of Development. I just wanted to share with you some data trends uh, from the Development Department and uh, kind of where we stand currently. 
So I wanted to remind you that Help Join Give is probably the easiest way to remember my department. Uh, help as in uh, volunteering, join, join the friends, and give to the foundation. That's uh, one of the ways that we can uh, remind the community and our colleagues of kind of what a, a little bit of a hodgepodge the department is. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the volunteers. And as you can tell from this, we're anticipating about uh, 827 uh, volunteers before the end of the year. Uh, that is people who volunteer 40 hours a week, all the way to teenagers who do just a couple hours here and there, uh, or episodic uh, volunteering. And as you can tell, and what you can't tell from the data is, yes, it's going up, but also the quality of the experiences going up. And I really want to commend uh, Amber Borkslater, who we were talking about earlier, um, that I noticed the other day um, in one of her uh, performance reviews, she put down that she wanted this volunteer pr program to be the premier volunteer program in the Kansas City area. And I was like, it is. She is doing such a magnificent job, and I just really want to commend her that we're getting a lot of people um, having just really high-quality volunteer experiences. And if, and if they're not, Amber tries to get them in a better volunteer role. The next slide shows you the number of hours and you can see that um, we're predicting that we'll probably, these numbers are as of October 31st, so we're probably going to hit last year's numbers and go a little bit above. Um, again, I'm just very impressed with um, also uh, the amount of volunteering people do. One thing I have learned is that while we love our volunteers and need them to operate these libraries and the Friends Sorting Center, um, they also need us. They uh, love their jobs here. A lot of them see them as jobs, uh, and uh, we do appreciate especially uh, our, what I would call full-time volunteers. Okay, on the next slide, we're going to look at friends. The total number of friends uh, for this year, right now we're predicting, as Amber, uh, or I'm sorry, um, Amber said earlier, uh, eight, Shanta, boy, I am off today. Shanta said earlier, 850 is what we're expecting before the end of the year. Again, you're seeing increases. You're seeing more people getting involved, and I think that is good outreach, good marketing, and um, and a lot of our volunteers are friends members, and a lot of friends members are our volunteers. So those kind of go together. Next slide. One of the things that Shanta and the friends I'm, are I'm sorry. Doing, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you, oh. but... Um, by the time it's time to talk, I'm going to forget my question. So oh, sure. Go I'm ahead. Interrupt you. Sorry. Um, you, you, you said a lot of things, um, but, but some things you said projected numbers and actual total numbers. When you're talking about the total number of volunteers, is that the total number that we've had since um, through October 31, 2023, or is that a projected number? That is the total number. Yeah, the okay. notes on there are the total number. Okay, so that's significantly more already then we had all of 2022. Right. Do you know what the numbers were in 2019 before the pandemic? Uh, I don't. I can get those for you, though. I'm happy right. to run those numbers. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to figure out, because it seems like it's, it's been gradually going up, and I, I want to know if... You know, I will what, what also we're doing let right. you know that because of staffing and because of databases with the volunteers, we're not 100% sure that the 2019 numbers are accurate. We can... Yes, but I, I, would not, I would not bet on them 100%. But they can give you a gauge. I'm happy to grab those for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So going back to the friends, um, one of the things I've been very impressed with Shanta is how the friends are really looking at their subcommittees. And this is a list of the subcommittees that they're working on to meet their strategic plan goals. And... One of the things, uh, just really looking at marketing and communicating about membership and getting people involved, um, getting uh, community engagement and advocacy, uh, that I really appreciate. We're expecting uh, possibly a tough year in Topeka this year. And so the friends are really, uh, as they did in 1952, are going to be there for us to be spokespeople and to remind people how terrific all libraries in Kansas are. And the ones in Johnson County. Next slide. Foundation. So this gives you an idea of the 
amount that we are donating to the Johnson County Library collection. So remember every year we get the big check out and we you know, get your smiling faces. And that is based off of a 3%, 3 3.75% return off of our investments. And so that fluctuates a little bit. That's, I'm doing a conservative estimate of what it might be this year. We've had about three months of a little bit of a downturn in the stock market. So our investments are not doing as well as they did earlier in the year. But uh, I probably am a little conservative on that number. But that is the, what we then turn over to the library to help with the collections and with materials that uh, Lacey Griffin and her team uh, then purchases. Next slide is the overall support to the Johnson County Library. And again, you see there's some fluctuation here, and that's based off of grants. So if we get a big grant from the Kauffman Foundation or uh, it's just a year where there's lots of grants coming in, you see that fluctuation. I think, though, as the program is growing and getting a little bit older, we're in our 26th year, we're going to start seeing things leveling a little bit more, where um, we're, grants are going to be a little bit more consistent. We're going to plan them out a little bit more. And then the flu only real fluctuations you'll see in the foundation um, money might be um, more around our investments. That's the goal. Okay, any questions that you have for me at this time? Anna? You had mentioned, you said this is, or next year is a tough year in Topeka. What, what do you mean yeah, by that? Yeah, um, I mean, we have heard several elected officials say that they are uh, planning on submitting legislation that could affect libraries in Topeka in uh, January when the session starts. Um, they been pretty public about it. I, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, we know a lot of things could happen between now and you know January 6th when uh, we're, we're there. I'm hoping very little. We, uh, the library community kind of likes a, a quiet Topeka. So. And the final slides, I just want to thank uh, many people that are here. For example, the Friends of Johnson County Library. It is Shanta. It is everybody. These are pictures from uh, a couple weeks ago when we were at the Board of County Commissioners, and Shanta received the proclamation for the National uh, Friends Week. And then the next slide, I want to thank the board of the Johnson County Library Foundation and the staff. Again, I am here just representing the, this entire group and giving you these statistics. In the spring, you'll hear more from Amber, who will give you more information about volunteers. And we hope to have Shanta giving you more data soon in the future. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Shelley. We'll invite Scott Syme to the podium. Talk about the Comprehensive Library Master Plan. Everybody, Scott Syme, project coordinator with the library. Thank you. <laughs> Have any jokes, Scott? Oh, man. <laughs> Next time I will bring a joke. I'm not sure you really want that, but. <laughs> Do you have any jokes? <laughs> Well, while we're waiting, Scott, I want to tell you how much I enjoyed the tour that I took of the Miriam Plaza Library recently. Uh, the city administrator and two council people from Miriam were uh, also on the tour and were very, very appreciative of the partnership with the library and bringing this all to fruition. I was also very impressed by Shelley's knowledge of uh, the Webb family and doing a bunch of research and really talking up that aspect of our uh, of that library uh, in particular, and I just, it, it, it's really coming together, and uh, it's so nice to see it from the ground up, and I'll be so thrilled when it opens. Thank you, and it's yeah, a, we, it's a, yeah, we drove by it last efforts. night, and my daughter wanted to go in. She asked if we could go in. I said, I don't know, maybe my card will work. But I didn't think that'd be Not a good idea, yet. though. Catherine uh, can have a tour anytime she likes. Well, I'll talk a little bit about Marion Plaza Library, and uh, next slide. First off, I'll give you a construction update for kind of what's happened over the last month, and I'll talk about what's going to happen over the next month. Just give another plug for tours, and then finally I'll 
I'll uh, show you the timeline and some pictures. Okay, so construction continues. Uh, this month they've been working on, on the interior, installing the wood slats on the interior ceilings, installing the lighting, art mural progress. Um, a reminder that we work with the county's 1% for public art program. And we have two commissions on this building. One um, that I'll show you in the pictures is Emily Alvarez. She's a local muralist. And the other is an exterior installation by Sage Vaughn out of LA. Um, other things going on inside, we're finishing with installing interior wall finishes, carpet, restroom partitions, those are important. Um, exterior, we, uh, I mentioned the artwork. If you, David, you probably saw this when you went past last night, we have the construction fence down. And um, as I mentioned, folks are excited about that library and excited for it to open. So uh, we're working with our communication team to put up some we're not quite ready yet signage. Um, of course, our patrons can't wait to see it. And even though the heavy construction's winding down, we have still quite a bit to do inside. Next steps. Uh, so construction for next month, finish up the restrooms, install the AV equipment, install our automated materials handling systems, which is the sorter, the RFID pads, and self-checks and then a bunch of work on the exterior, the landscaping, um, the wood soffits underneath, the overhangs, and then the exterior building signage. Uh, we continue planning for the transition from Antioch to Marion Plaza. I have an item later on the agenda that we'll talk about for the closure of Antioch. Um, and let's see, I've got a couple of pictures to show you. Timeline first. Um, so this is our current timeline. I think if you advance one, it'll show you that little thing at the end moves to the left just a little bit, and that's what we'll talk about later on. Here is a here are a couple of shots of the inside. These uh, one on the left is looking um, at one of those light monitors. This one it looks like it's uh, Slater Street, and then on the right side you'll see that mural by Emily Alvarez. Um, this really has a focus on community roots and then also some tie-ins to the Webb family. There's an aerial photo of the green roof plantings. You can kind of see that from the top of the parking garage. And then on the right side, you'll see the exterior art installed. Those are uh, kind of blown up plant forms um, by the LA artist Sage Vaughn. Next up, I'd like to introduce Jared Harper. He'll give you an update on the branch operations team work. Plaza. Good afternoon. I'm Jared Harper. I'm the branch manager for the Central Resource and Oak Park Libraries, and I'm currently the project manager for the Merriam Plaza Branch Operations Project, which is quite the mouthful. <laughs> uh, Last month you heard from Cass Sickles about all the IT work that is being done for Marion Plaza and continue on that theme this week or this month with branch operations. And then next month you'll hear from Alyssa, I believe, for communications. Next slide, please. there you go. Uh, the Marion Plaza branch operations team consists of myself as project manager, Amy Barkley, the current branch manager of Antioch, Sheeta Bates, the current assistant branch manager of Antioch, uh, Nicole Schlegel, the assistant branch manager for Gardner, Spring Hill, and Edgerton. Amanda Wallmeyer, who is our local history librarian. And Eleanor Strait, one of our uh, learning and development specialists with the library. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we began meeting in May for this project, and our first task was to really define what the scope of branch operations meant. We determined that the Marion Plaza Branch Operations Project focuses, as it says here, on the resources and trainings needed for library staff to provide service and access for our community. This has allowed us to make staff our priority and help them succeed in what they do best, serving our community. Next slide. So we broke this scope down into four different activities to help us concentrate on what tasks were needed for our project. The implementation of these tasks will take place during the time frame between Antioch's closing and Marion Plaza's opening. So we've done a lot of work and we're just now kind of in a holding pattern until we have the okay to, to move forward. Next slide, please. 
So for our transition activity, we highlighted those tasks that needed to be done, moved out of Antioch in preparation for Merriam Plaza. Uh, Amy Barclay coordinated with Merriam Community Center to hold a few programs after Antioch's closure, uh, specifically story times and a writing program for, for kids ages 10 to 14, known as our Scribblers program. Official programming for Merriam Plaza will begin the summer with the summer reading kickoff in 2024. Next slide, please. Our branch specific activities. These highlight those tasks that will prepare the physical location to host staff and help them be comfortable in our new space, setting up our back layout uh, for carts, where the materials are going to land when they're brought in by our couriers, what supplies do we need for Merriam Plaza for our staff to do their jobs, it, uh, updating what procedures they need to do, making sure the library is open, closed, and whatever happens in between. And then also organizing the shared workspace that we're going to have there too. Next slide, please. Our system-wide activities was designed for those that are outside of Merriam Plaza, all the rest of the Johnson County Library staff. The majority of it came down to making sure that the name Merriam Plaza is now on any official document that we have, any e-resources that help our staff to connect resources to our patrons, uh, such as our answers, procedures, and the quick references we have for our Johnson County Library staff. Our LibCal is the resource we use for reserving rooms for the library. Uh, so making sure that those rooms are, have been created and then are able to be reserved the day the library opens. Also with this, again, that there are no, there's not gonna be any programming happening in Marion Plaza for the first few months until that summer um, reading kickoff, just to give staff a time to be adjusted in the space, figure out what the nuances of a new building are and what sort of needs the, this, even though it's not technically a new community, but new people are gonna come because it is a new library. So making sure that we're reaching out and re doing the programming and resources that this new community will need. Next slide, please. And finally, our training activities. Uh, this is specifically geared for the 16 staff who will be working at Merriam Plaza. With the help of our learning and development department, activities are designed to provide staff with the knowledge and skills they will need to work in the new building. Trainings will consist of learning to use the new audiovisual system and the new sorter, the shared workspace, and provide team building. These activities will take place approximately one month, give or take, uh, before Marion Plaza opens and will involve staff from other departments too. Uh, as I said before, all these activities are planned to happen once, Marion, once Antioch closes and during that time frame before Antioch, before Marion Plaza opens. It's quite, the, it's hard to, <laughs> They're all the same, aren't they? No. Um, what questions do you have? Thank you, Jared. Thank Sounds you. like you're doing a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this project team is very important, and we learned that um, when we opened Monticello in the time where we just had staff in the building, they were getting up and running before patrons were, um, before we were open to the public. And I, I remember a phone call from Christian Madrigal saying, can you bring some pens to Monticello? <laughs> because we had all kind of forgotten that we actually need school supplies there. So we, so we employed a new project team to make sure we always have all the stuff that branch needs when they open. So. Okay, uh, I'll give you a little update on Lackman. Um, we had uh, opened an RFP for real estate brokerage services. That RFP is now closed. Interviews are scheduled for next week. The next step is uh, selecting that uh, person or firm that we want to award the contract and putting the contract together. I expect we'll be back, I anticipate we'll be back December or January with that contract for you all to take a look at. Capital project timeline summary. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is our, these are our big projects. Um, we are on track from last month. The only change I've made in between is adding the Prairie Village site studies. Likely um, red color. Uh, and the other thing I want to mention is we're working to re bring a revised timeline back based on what we heard at the a few weeks ago, a couple of months, a couple of weeks ago. 
Okay, next up, CRP. Um, October, there were a couple of things that the board approved, so those are now reflected on here. Um, Blue Valley entryway flooring, um, that's expected to occur next week, um, so we'll take up that tile floor and replace it. Um, the drive through will remain open throughout. The rest of the building will be closed just because of where that work has to happen. You can't get... and Corinth Cedar Row elevators. I put a couple of little clouds in there just to say there's more work there and we don't know the timelines yet. Edgerton, that is something that we are still expecting to do before the end of the year. This is an interior sewer line replacement. Uh, we're still anticipating that two-week two closure. Oak Park is on track. We are expecting to open Oak Park back up. I'm gonna say a date out loud. 18th and then Shawnee um, we we're expecting a project similar in scope to Oak Park um, so you'll see a anticipated timeline there and we'll we have an item in new business to uh, introduce that to you that's all I have any questions I can answer for you thanks thank you Scott uh, for my report, I have a few things to update you on, uh, and then I'll also take a point of personal privilege as well. Uh, so Veterans Day, of course, um, observed tomorrow. The libraries will be closed. The county um, is sponsoring uh, recognition. That'll be at the Lenexa Armory um, out on 87th Street. Um, and so there'll be several things going on there. It is open to the public, and it will be live stream on the county's um, Facebook page. So if you're not able to make it in person. Um, library, will be, library will be represented. Chairman Kelly will be the, the MC. Music will be, we'll have music, um, presentation of colors, and of course taps, uh, placement of a memorial wreath. Uh, and there will be a Brigadier General, Anthony Mohat, who'll be the featured speaker. So certainly um, welcome all who are um, listening, um, either online or in person. The board retreat recap um, mentioned Few folks have mentioned it. Um, the board looked at f uh, three or four different topics. The first is the review the, comprehen the comprehensive library master plan, as Scott mentioned, um, and you'll see an action item on the agenda tonight for that. Um, citizen comments. Um, Kinsley reviewed the library policy in some historical context and practices around various boards um, in the metro area, um, just to give a few options of what's happening. Uh, and then there was general board agreement to move forward with an update to an existing policy. Um, and that will make it clear to citizens as well as board members and the board chair about how they will move forward. The general alignment was around um, a total of 30 minutes for citizen comments, two minutes for individual comments. And then we discussed um, excused and unexcused absences. Um, and we looked at current policy um, and reviewed practice, different practices and options for the board. Um, we're gonna move forward or move, move towards an update in our absence policy and practice. Um, we, the, then the fourth thing was um, looking at closures, emergency, planned, and urgent in all three different categories. Um, Adam Wathen prepared some options as far as the policy and the differences between those types of closures. Um, and the library board had alignment around urgent closures being defined around three days and that that approval would not need to come to the library board but could be made by the county librarian. Um, and that urgent being a kind of a middle ground. It's not an emergency, um, but we it's not completely planned out. So something we might need to act on a little bit quicker. Um, those um, topics that you all covered at the library board retreat will come back with policy updates um, December, January. So we're, we're still pulling some of those uh, together. And then earlier this um, summer, um, we had a failure of the chiller at our Monticello branch. Um, we had a study conducted by Clark and Anderson to determine exactly what the cause was. That's a fairly new building, five-ish years old. So wanted to investigate that a little bit deeper and understand what was happening. The study um, has been shared with the library board and shows no defect with the equipment or fault to any 
any particular business. Um, the study did, however, produce some recommendations that our facility staff are going to implement moving forward. So um, there had been a couple requests for that information from the board, so I wanted to follow up, uh, wrap that up. So I think we're in good shape now and certainly I think many lessons learned for, um, for both the library and facilities. Um, with regard to chillers. So um, so two things I'd like to recognize. Um, the first is Joe Waters. Um, as Commissioner Hanslick said, he's retiring after a pretty incredible um, career and great influence on Johnson County and of course the library as well. He was the director of facilities for 19 years and so that's really where the library first um, encountered Joe and his work and where he first kind of had his wonderful impact on us. He um, was also the bureau chief for a few years at the county, within the county manager's office, and then in 2015 became the assistant county manager. And it's at that point where he really spent time with the library specifically as our liaison to the county commissioners and the county as a whole. So Joe has brought, um, bef before he was with the county, a decade of private sector experience to his role um, in consulting and facilities management. So a wealth of, um, of experience. So Joe, of course, to many, many people, has been a very valued and trusted colleague through his time. Um, instrumental in a, f a few things or efforts in our community, public art among one, um, and setting a very high bar for civic architecture, um, sustainable buildings, as well as high performing buildings. And, and we have really, we the library have really been the beneficiary of that effort, um, as well as the citizens and all of our buildings you can see not only Joe's um, excitement and enthusiasm and his intelligence, but also through the people we've got to work with that he's hired and mentored over the years. So his um, oh, legacy um, will live on. He, he rolls his eyes at that word, but, um, but it's true. Um, so here's things that we will miss about Joe. Um, first of all, his very calm demeanor, his keen insight about lots of things, specifically architecture and buildings, but there's, there's lots more, and his thoughtful approach that he takes to issues that, that come across his desk, um, and probably whether they're really in his world or not, um, he, he really gives a very thoughtful approach to those things. Um, and personally, I will miss his wonderful sense of humor, especially when you sit next to him at a meeting. Um, you get a whole nother sense of humor from Joe, which I appreciate. One of his many superpowers is giving his time to a concern and thoughtfully walking you or the group through that concern as if it was his own concern and the only concern in the world at that time. He really respects the person and their concerns as if it was his own. And as a recipient of that superpower, I can tell you it is life changing and I am now taking applications for that vacancy. So if you know anybody with that skill, I'm, I'm, apply, I'm hiring. Um, Joe, we have selected a book for the collection that recognizes several of your interests, art and architecture primarily, but also your love of curiosity um, and your humor. A nameplate has been placed in the book recognizing you and your dedication to the county, but also to the library, both stints at the county, because he took a break in before. Um, we hope to see you as a customer often. Um, and so please join me in wishing him well and thanking him for his many years of dedicated service. And don't forget to come back as a volunteer. That's right. <laughs> or a donation to the foundation. Uh, yes. Or both. Or both. Thank you. Um, yes. Do you mind? Talk away. I uh, was not prepared uh, to speak, <laughs> nor to receive anything tonight. Um, but thank you so much, Tricia and, and Commissioner Hanslick. Um, and some of us were talking before the meeting. Um, there are so many things that I love about my work. Um, I love coming to work every day. Uh, and that has always been the case, but there's a whole lot of other things that I love to do and um, work gets in the way of a lot of them. So uh, that and it's, it's just kind of time, time for me to retire. So um, I would want to share with the, the library as, as uh, several of us were talking earlier. This is um, an extraordinary 
organization. Uh, the library is, the Parks and Recreation, which I'm also the liaison to right now. But really, you know, I could say that about every uh, part and parcel of Johnson County government. Um, it is an excellent organization made up of extraordinarily talented people uh, and professionals in each of their own areas that when you go to conferences, I know many of you, I've, I, I, I could tell stories about being at ICMA and NACO conferences and going to library sessions just because I, you know, kind of, I'm, I'm a nerd. So I go to the library sessions and I end up talking about all the things that we're doing and they go, where are you? Oh, we know where you're from. <laughs> You're from Johnson County. You know Johnson County Libraries. That has, honest to God, happened twice. Um, and you're there to hear the trend setting, and then you start talking about just me off the top of my head, the things that this library system does. Um, so you have so much to be proud for, and I have so much to be, to be proud of, and I have so much to be thankful for, for the opportunity to work with you all these many years. So thank you so much. And then I will, uh, I'll get there. Can I really do something? Okay. <laughs> so we welcome 1.6 million visitors each year to our libraries. So in my 25 years, that's approximately 40 million customers through our doors. And today I wanna to recognize one person that I will not forget. So Jeff Sturkey, as Commissioner Hanslick mentioned, was a beloved patron and known for his caring nature and incredible memory. He has passed away at the age of six, 68. His passion for numbers and facts were very evident through his life. Um, he has served as a scorekeeper for many, many institutions um, around the county, and many people know him for that. What you might not know is for many years, he served as a volunteer for the Johnson County Library within our communication department and diligently processed our numerous bulk mailings, this would have been in the 90s, of uh, promotional materials. Um, and this is when we had to label and get everything ready for the post office ourselves rather than a vendor doing it for us. Jeff used his incredible um, memory and love of statistics and scores and numbers um, to really help us with that. He earned a bachelor's degree in computer science from the University of Kansas. Um, and of course, this led right to his dedication to learning and expanding his horizons. His thirst for knowledge extended beyond his professional life. And as Commissioner Hanslick mentioned, he was a very frequent uh, visitor for the Johnson County Library. He immersed himself in new books and explored many different genres of literature. <clears throat> Jeff impacted our lives. He was a daily, hello, how are you? To staff at many locations over the years and a check of his holds. That was his signature. Um, he was always inquisitive about the world and the future of the library. He regularly attended library board meetings and public programs. He and his well-being were top of mind for staff during the pandemic as we were not able to see him regularly. He taught us all how to be better librarians and to create a welcoming environment and provide access to all citizens. He will be deeply missed by those who had the privilege of knowing him. Thank you. That concludes my report. Just might add, the last time that I saw uh, Jeff, what, he was in the rehab facility, and as you know, his first and top concern was I have, li I have library books that are overdue at my house. How do, I, how, do I, how do I make sure I don't get fined and how do I get them back? That was his main concern. He was recovering from some uh, serious health issues, but his main concern was his library books. So 
he and his family, his friends, have uh, named the Johnson County Library Foundation as a recipient for donations. So just speaks to the, the impact that libraries have on um, individuals that we may never know. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, still have business to attend to, so we shall move yes. on, but with a little bit of a heavy heart. Um, the first thing is our consent agenda, and I need a motion, please. I move the Library Board of Directors approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries. Okay. And now we have old business. We have an action item, and this is the closure of Antioch. Hello again, everyone. Okay, today I'm before you to ask uh, to for approval of the recommendation to close Antioch. This is here for the opening of Marion Plaza Library. Uh, this closure date that we're recommending is after the close of business, Sunday, January 28th. Uh, later in November, the library is expected to receive substantial completion on the new building. Furniture, equipment, shelving will soon begin arriving and installation will follow in anticipation of the new building. Of course, we want to minimize the time the, the community goes without service. Uh, several more tasks are needed to finish during this closure uh, time, as uh, Jared mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, some of those. For example, we can't uh, install computers on desks until the desks themselves come in. Uh, during the closure, we'll have uh, staff transitioning to the new building. They'll receive training on the new, new building and system functionality and processes. Uh, the existing Antioch collection, the computers, other equipment will migrate down the hill to Marion Plaza, and this work most efficiently happens when the building is closed. Uh, the timing of my request tonight is also allowing us, uh, if approved, to capitalize on some publication deadlines. Our, our guide, for one, a couple of Merriam um, Visitors Bureau and their city newsletter are, are a couple of the other ones. We will have some public, uh, public impacts, such as starting to close off reservability for the meeting rooms, and then the temporary signage um, that we'll put up. As soon as we're clear of all contingencies, I look back forward to bringing you a date for the Ribbon cutting. Are there any questions that I can answer about this? Uh, I don't. Scott. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm trying to figure out if we don't know when the Merriam Plaza Library is going to open, then how can we close the Antioch Library? Right. So that's a fair question. So um, what we're looking at is we have those estimates about when the furniture is coming in, how long it takes the equipment to be moved and reinstalled. Um, we have that from Lackman. We have it a little bit from this building. Um, so we forget about those estimates. They're typically about eight weeks. Um, so that's what, uh, yeah. So when the only um, estimate we have right now about the opening of Merriam, it just says spring 2024. But, I mean, th it sounds like you may have a more narrow estimated opening date. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so what I'm trying to avoid is saying a date and right. then not hitting the date. So in the next month or two, we will come back with a very specific date for the opening of Marion Plaza. And this is the exact same procedure that we did for this building for Lenexa for Monticello, correct? Monticello was a little different because we weren't closing an existing building. Yes, but in terms of wanting to be cautious with an opening date, we wanted a little more firmness, correct? Yes. I, okay. and, I, and, I, and I totally appreciate that. I want to minimize the amount of time that that area, right? I said this at the last meeting, and I'm yes. repeating this again, mm -hmm. yeah. that that area is without a, a library, right? So if we don't know yet when Miriam is going to open, then why would we close or why would we approve closing Antioch? Why not wait? Sounds like we're close to knowing the date for opening Miriam. Why not wait? And then um, at the December meeting, vote on the closure date for um, Antioch. So as I think as Scott mentioned, we are trying to take advantage of some publication dates to 
get the word out to people about the closing. Um, and I think we're relying on our past experience that it is about pretty close to eight weeks. So we, we know that. I think we are um, in agreement of limiting the lack of service in that area. Okay, any other questions, comments, or concerns? I would take a motion if there are none. I move to table this into the next meeting. I move that we postpone this voting. Okay, then we'll need to vote on tabling that. Uh, we need a second. Does anybody second the motion to table? Okay, then I will entertain a motion on uh, the closure. I move to approve the Miriam Plaza team's recommendation to close the Antioch Library on 128-2024 to facilitate preparations for the opening of the Miriam Plaza Library. And I would take a second on that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Okay, that motion carries. Thank you. Okay, our next one is a consideration to approve revisions to administrative regulation manual. That's right. Um, if you remember, last month I brought forward um, changes to many different policies uh, in the administra administrative regulations manual. Um, we uh, are bringing back those same changes, um, and if you would like, I can go through them and detail them, or uh, I can stand for questions. I have a question. Yes. The one that we pulled off of the consent agenda last time, ARM yes. 208027, are you Correct. still researching that? We are, okay. and um, we just have- just didn't see it yet on there. Correct. So. It is not on here, and we are researching that, and that plus uh, the other policies that Trisha mentioned earlier, we're working on and we'll be bringing back uh, at a future meeting, so. Thank yep. you. Okay, does anyone want to separate these, or are we content with them being done as a group. Uh, if there is no specific direction, then I will take a motion and we will start there. I move that the Johnson County Library Board of Directors approve revisions to the administrative regulation manual policies 10 TAC 50 TAC 40, 10 TAC 30 TAC 20, 20 TAC 10 TAC 11, 20 TAC 10 TAC 55, 20 TAC 20 TAC 55, 20 TAC 80 TAC 20, 60 TAC 10 TAC 50, and 60 Tech 20 Tech 50 and repeal administrative regulation manual policies 20 Tech 6 20 Tech 65 20 Tech 30 Tech 65 20 Tech 80 Tech 21 and 20 Tech 80 Tech 22. Good job. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? Okay, and that motion carries. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was a lot of numbers to get through. <laughs> okay, and so now we have new business. We have an action item. The approval of the prioritization for remaining comprehensive library master plan projects. Yes. So you'll remember at the retreat in October, um, the library board discussed um, the prioritization of the comprehensive library master plan, master plan projects. On um, the briefing sheet, uh, you have the background um, as well as the analysis and the uh, proposed prioritization list. Um, so I can stand for any questions. If I may, yes, um, the motion is worded to go with what came out of the retreat. And after I thought about it for um, a little bit of time following the retreat, I'm actually going to vote to oppose what's here. I feel like it would be in our best interest to follow staff recommendation as it relates to what to do with DeSoto and Spring, um, DeSoto and Spring Hill in the short term um, and to move the clump refresh up and wait to invest heavily in those communities until we figure out what the new uh, clump refresh study has to say. So I just wanted to explain why I will be voting in opposition to the motion. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have any other uh, questions or comments and concerns on that? Uh, if we don't, then I will take a motion. I move to approve the Clum Project prioritization as discussed as the o to October 19th, 2023 Library Board Retreat with number one, DeSoto Spring Hill renovation, two, Corinth, and three, the Clump refresh, 
with the Mobile Learning Lab and Blue Valley prioritization to be determined after the completion of the clump refresh. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? opposed? Thank you, that motion carries. Okay, and now we are in the land of information items. Yes, um, I'm here to present a memorandum of understanding with Department of Health and Environment. And this, uh, your briefing sheet does include a suggestion motion, but um, it is an information item this month. So um, we have a partnership with the Department of Health and Environment, and through this partnership, through this partnership, um, we have uh, many different service lines that we deliver through the library on behalf of the Department of Health and Environment. They do some programming in our spaces. Uh, we distribute COVID-19 tests, for instance, um, and uh, we promote Department of Health and Environment efforts in library spaces. Are there any questions about this memorandum of understanding? Okay, if uh, any questions arise between now and our next meeting, um, please, uh, probably I'd say within two weeks or so, um, get those to Patty so that that will give staff time to get any data required before this moves to an action item. Okay, and then our next information item. Good evening, Jennifer Munkin, Associate Director for System-Wide Services. Um, I'm here to present uh, as an information item our partnership with the Election Office. Uh, this is um, not on consent because there are some substantial changes to the um, MOU at the Election Office's request. It um, includes a lot of specific language, um, specific locations, specific people, um, that we typically wouldn't put in an MOU, in my opinion, but they have asked us to include this very specific information in it. So um, that's why we're uh, bringing it to you for information. See if you have any questions. It'll be on for a vote next month. Um, the partnership with the election office has been very successful. We um, believe very much in supporting the democratic process and having uh, the libraries as polling places uh, fulfills that mission very well, and um, it provides the necessary uh, space and technology that a lot of other places don't have. Um, so the uh, library is a good space for uh, elections to happen. So um, we're very supportive of this partnership and are looking forward to moving forward with that. Do you have other questions I can answer for you? So who takes down all the signs when the election's over? <laughs> they're like lined up the street. It's supposed at, you know, to be the uh, the candidates, uh -huh. but <laughs> no. I had a great experience again at Monticello with advanced voting, yes, and I'm awesome. very very appreciative that that's available. Yes, um, um, Jennifer, can you go into a little more in detail about what specifically they asked to include in here? I couldn't tell from the right. It's kind of it's not redlined very well. So um, under the section um, that says poll site agreement. Um, starting with that section, everything after that is new. Um, so the dates and the times and the contact information and the specific uh, libraries and the specific places in the libraries are noted. Um, the advanced voting schedule is noted very specifically. Um, they also added a section about compliance with election laws uh, in this document. And also the signs are also noted. Um, and then what each um, group is responsible for. So this is all language that came from uh, the election office. Thank you. Uh -huh. So Good Jen, job. we didn't have contact names, specific people's names. That does seem a little it's very specific. Unusual, and what if that person very was specific unavailable or out on leave or left or for a year exactly. from now? Gonna, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. And they may be ramping up for the national election. Yes, they are. Of 2024 will be a big year. That if so. that helps, you know, voters with information, that's that's kind of where we got of like this is really specific and more than we normally do and. If they want it, we'll we'll do it. It's a little um, different I suppose than the question ones. that I would have, um, if maybe uh, admin can think about between now and when we um, this becomes an action item, is um, what kind of staff time ask is this? This availability that this is that that's a lot of 
people a lot of locations, and I don't object to having voting, but there's a difference between you have a box here, you have something here, and then what feels like almost a demand on staff time. And I would kind of like to have a little bit better feel mm -hmm. for what specifically it is they're right. asking for with this. If this is just a contact person who can be there to ask a question if it arises, that feels really different than somebody needs to be on call from the second the... Right. The mostly who will let them in who, early. Who lets them in. Some of those yes. detail things, just a little bit, just so that we can have a better understanding of what they think they're asking. I guess I, I don't. That doesn't feel terribly clear with it. Just people's phone numbers are now there. Um, just because I, I'd like to know what the ask is, that doesn't feel clear to me in terms of why this is so vital to them. We will add that in. Okay. Mostly it is just letting people into the building okay. and then maybe having another staff person available to check out books if someone wants it before we actually open. <laughs> okay. So that's yeah, basically thing. if we could, um, and if that, if that is more easily solved with having somebody from elections come down and actually just talk to us for a couple minutes, then we could get that on the agenda for December if that's, if that makes that process easier. However, we can get a little bit more information Absolutely. before we get here. We'll include it in the in the briefing sheet for next month. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. uh, anything anything else? else on this particular item? Other than, yeah, because the election office is running everything. That's not right. mm -hmm. our job. So, no, but I'm, otherwise, I'm a big favor. I'm glad we're doing this. I'm glad we're providing Very those much. boxes to make it easier for people to vote. You know, we got the cameras in place and security yeah. and things like that. No, so, I, I have no so. real desire to change it. I just want to make sure everybody knows what the actual yes. ask <laughs> is here. Totally appreciate that. Okay. Um, and then our next information item then. Kelly O'Brien again. Uh, on this briefing sheet, this is our annual ask to do a temporary closure of the library for Library Let's Loose in September of 2024. Uh, a little different this year, we're asking not for the entire Saturday. Uh, I am challenging my department to try to do it in four and a half hours instead. Um, I was a Saturday morning library kid, and so the idea of Central being closed in the morning uh, hurts my heart. So <laughs> That's fantastic, Shelley. Thank so, you so much. Uh, it does. I want this library to be open as much as possible. So we're going to try to do 2 o'clock. Now, um, this might, in fact, I think we're even going to have a sign at the front that says, you know, pardon our mess, we're getting ready for a party because we're going to have volunteers running around. But we did a very small test the other other day where we ran tours um, uh, one Tuesday afternoon and patrons actually enjoyed learning more about it. So I think the patrons are going to be interested in learning what all the fuss is about the going about the library. So I think it's a good thing. Any questions? Um, is there any particular reason why we need to wait on this or do you guys just want to get this taken care of now? This is going to get approved, Shelley. Okay, right <laughs> I mean, if you uh, would like to, that there is, is fine. a suggested motion in your packet. If somebody would like to just get this done, we can do that. I We're all looking move. for the suggested motion. <laughs> <laughs> I move we um, temporarily close the Central Resource Library for Library Let's Loose 2024 at 2 p.m. on the day of Saturday, September 21st. 21st. Earth, wind, and fire. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? There we Thank go. You. We appreciate it. Huzzah. Okay, another information item. I got the pink blazer memo today, so <laughs> always in fashion. Um, yes, final thing here, information for you. We are drawing near to the process for our CRP work at Shawnee, so bringing this for your information today, work order authorization approval and request for temporary closure for planned CRP work at Shawnee Library. Um, that's going to include HVAC and security upgrades, restroom remodel, ADA improvements, shelving replacement, carpeting replacement, exterior building signage and other interior improvements. So there's a lot of work bundled into this um, closure. Um, and we are looking at a closure of four to six months. We are getting bidding now, so we'll be able to bring back um, hopefully more refined dates. And we're hoping to bring this in December for um, a vote. Um, and so we recognize this is a disruption to library services and we want to um, 
bundle as much as we can into that closure and we'll be reassigning staff to other locations during that time. And you know, at this point, we are hoping that we can be uh, finished with this work in advance of the summer season. Um, but once we have more information, uh, we'll see what that timeline looks like and we'll keep you informed of the process. Um, any questions on this? No, just the encouragement to limit the summer closure as much as possible. But that you already mentioned. Thank you. Okay. So as with anything else, if uh, anything comes to you that you would like more information on, uh, please contact Patty um, so that we can be prepared to vote for vote on this at the next meeting. That is all of our new business, but we do have an executive session today, and that is a personnel review. Um, so just as a reminder that once we vote on going into executive session, there will be a specific time. Uh, we will move somewhere else, and then we will come back at the end of that to adjourn. Uh, so Kelly? Mm -hmm. I move that pursuant to KSA 75-4319B1 that the Board of Directors of the Johnson County Library recess into executive session for a period of 30 minutes to discuss personnel matters of non-elected personnel. The subject of the discussion during the executive session will be the performance appraisal of the county librarian. Those attending the executive session shall include members of the Board of Directors of the Johnson County Library, Johnson County HR Partner, and County Librarian Trisha Solentrop. Okay, need a second. Those in favor? Aye. Okay. We will be back at 551. And we will be in the treehouse, which is in a staff area, so Patty will kind of lead us there, key card you in, and you need to be in there basically 15 minutes later. Oh,
Okay, the minutes can reflect that we are back early at 5.44. And we have a motion. I move as chair of the annual appraisal committee. We completed the appraisal and voted to give the county librarian a 3.5% merit raise. Need a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries. That I move is to adjourn. End of our business. So second. motion to adjourn. <laughs> we have a first, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Woohoo! We're done. Thank you.